Today, I'm gonna to show you why every spot on the lake is not the same and how you can find that secret spot. Release your lure down to the length of your rod. You've only got one chance to be a parent. Don't waste it. This simple and simply catch fish. So let's break down how bass move in the in the body of water they live in based on the water clarity, the water temperature, and the different seasons that they're going through. What you need to first realize is that bass live in deep water. And throughout the year, they transition from shallow to deep, shallow to deep. Let's start with January. January is typically the coldest month for most people in the country. This is when you're gonna have the coldest water. Well, in the first of the year, when that water is below 50 degrees, these bass are gonna stay out on the, the deepest water they can find to where the water's not changing that much. It's more stable, it's warmer. They're getting ready to move up into shallow water to spawn. Once the water hits 62 to 70 degrees, this is when those bass start to move from those deeper areas out in the lake and move off into the shallow water where most people can catch a lot of fish. So now we're, we're into 60 degree water and higher. A lot of the bass have moved shallow. This is typically the spring of the year. This is when you wanna come in and fish the shallow water, the, the bed fishing you hear about, and all those types of techniques. The bass are not typically out in deeper water during that time because a bass number one thing that they want to do is eat and reproduce. That's what their whole biological clock is based on. Where the food is and when do I get to spawn. As soon as they are done spawning and the water temperature is, is raising up typically from the end of May, June, July, August, summer. This is summertime fishing. This is called post spawn. Post spawn, after the spawn, these fish are done in shallow water. They're, they're tired of being up here. The water is constantly changing. It's going from three or four degree difference a day. It's, it's, it's cooler in the morning and it's heating up in the day and the sun's coming out and they've got all these things that's making this water not stable for them. And that's why summertime fishing is so hard in shallow water because the bass are just not there. No matter how good that spot looks, they're just not there. In summertime water, this is when you wanna move back off out of that shallow water and go back into deeper water. Once that water starts to become more stable and cool off in the fall, these bass move back into shallow water because the bait fish and all this food that they eat now they have begun to move back into shallow. So in the fall, you go back and fish the shallow water. Winter time, they go back out into deep water. It's just one big cycle. What type of season are your bass gonna be in based on the weather? It's summertime, so all this shallow water that's, that's starting to come up with grass that I have, it's not really good right now. Now here in just a couple of months, when that water cools back down and these smaller bait fish move into these grass beds, that's when it's gonna be really good. Bass follow their food. Wherever the food is, that's where the bass goes. The second biggest thing that a bass is gonna look for is oxygen. You are not gonna find very many fish in just calm, stagnant water. Think about if you have a fish aquarium. What's the first thing that you have to do when you buy a fish aquarium? You have to buy a pump, a pump to move that water. Fish cannot live in just steel, stagnant water. So what you wanna look at when you get on the lake or on the bank or wherever you're, wherever you're fishing is, is there current to produce oxygen or wind? And 
uh, is there food for this bass to eat in the area that I'm fishing? So now that we've broke down each type of season that the bass are in, now let's go break down each type of spot that these bass are going to stage in once you figure out what type of season it is. Each area has certain spots that's going to be your high percentage spots for bass to hide. Even though this whole area may be the type of water that they're in for the season, it doesn't mean that they're just laying in here everywhere. You have to figure out how bass are staged and set up on areas to get food. A bass does not want to spend all its day just constantly running around wasting energy for food. They want to get the fastest, quickest meal they possibly can when they decide to eat. The rest of the time, they're just laying there relaxing. Right here's my boat ramp. And it, you can see it's just calm. It's early morning. It's just real calm. It's slick calm. But look around. There's not any fish, any kind of activity in this whole area. There's no kind of wind blowing. There's no kind of current. So because it's the summertime, this is not going to be a very good spot to fish. Now, if this was springtime, when the, when the fish have moved in shallow, then I would, I would stay right here all day long because I know this is going to be a good bed area for them to be spawning in because they're protected from the wind and it's shallow water where they can lay their eggs. But today, middle of summer, this same exact spot has no fish. So, if they were in here, I would fish these little points that come out around this rock pile here. This bridge, there's all kind of, this is all structure. Bass are going to relate to structure. Any type of structure in this area, that's where they're going to be. These rock piles, I'm sure that these rock piles come out. When they built this bridge, I'm sure that they had to stack out, stage some rocks on it in this water. So maybe over here, there's a big area of rocks, so underneath that it's all rocks. You can look at how the rocks transition down the bank. There's not as many rocks. So maybe down through here, maybe that turns into maybe some sand or dirt or whatever kind of bottom that is. And then once I get over here, I can see, oh, that looks like some grass is growing over here. This whole back of this pocket here is grass. Well, if I was going to fish this spot, I would, I would start in that grass because fish and bait fish are going to live in that grass because they're protected and that's where the big bass go to eat that bait fish. I come on down to this, down this bank. What do I have? I have two docks here. Now look at this dock. This is the first dock I come to from the point of this creek channel. Dock number two. If I had to pick a dock to fish, I'm going to fish this first dock because if the bass came in here, this is going to be the first piece of hard structure they come to after the rocks. There may be enough fish in here that they're just stacked up on both of these docks. I would hit both docks, but if I could only fish one dock, I would fish this one first. Now, what do you notice in between those two docks? There's two boat ramps, private boat ramps to these houses that obviously, look, they, they never use. They never use it because look how, how the grass is. Their yards are perfectly mowed. But look at this grass down here. It's all high, grew up, which is going to produce a lot of shade for these bass to lay in. I would go over there when I was fishing those docks and I would hit that whole area there, the whole little circle there. So let's go out to the main lake and I'm gonna show you how and when you'd wanna fish the main lake area based on the same concept. <laughs> So what I did guys, I just made a long run out here to the main river channel. 
And the lake that I live on, Chickamauga, and is connected to Watts Bar and Nickajack Lake. Those bodies of water are regulated by TVA, which pulls and pushes water in and out to regulate water to make electricity. So on this, on this body of water, all my current is gonna be dictated out here in the main river channel. In the summertime and any other time of year, that's gonna be my coolest water at any, at any given time. Based on the season, it tells me whether those fish are out here in deep water or back here in the back of the creeks. In the springtime, you know those fish are gonna be back there getting close to spawn. So what do you transition to when you start fishing deep water and then a little more shallow water and then eventually into the very backs of these creeks? Well, just for easy reference, let's say that this, this that this main river channel is 20 foot deep, okay? I wanna fish in the main river during the heat of the summer. I wanna find any kind of depth change or structure change that these bass can relate to. If you're fishing out here in the main river, that's when you wanna start using your electronics, your down scan, all that kind of stuff that you go by. The structure that they're on out here in the river is the same structure that they're on in the creeks. The only difference is you just you can't see a brush pile sitting here. So you fish it the exact same. If I was to just idle my motor around up and down this up and down this bank here, I would be looking for rock piles, a big tree, a sunken boat, any type of structure that a bass can live on if they're staying in the deeper water. When that water starts to cool off, even more into the back of the creeks, closer to springtime, closer to fall, that's when these bass start to move to the back of these creeks. Well, where do bass move when that water temperature changes? Well, this right here is just a random creek channel. I've got my main river channel right here. And then here is just a little creek on that goes it goes back in all the way back into here and it just winds and turns. I know that this is a point and that's a point. And I know that this is a creek channel and there's gonna to have to be a depth change in between those two pieces of land. So the other day I was out here in the main river. I decided, well, I, I couldn't find any fish out here. Now I'm going to start working my way back to more shallow water. Well, let's just say for easy reference that this water is 12 foot deep. This is 20 and that's 12. I want to position my boat and, and however I'm fishing, out of a kayak or, or boat or whatever you're on, position your boat in shallow water and throw in the deeper water and you want to drag jigs and spinner baits or whatever you want to fish with drag it up up these banks that that are around this uh, depth change or you can stay here in deeper water and throw into shallow water and then drag it off the banks that's how you'd want to do it if you had no electronics electronics makes it so much easier you can just idle over there and see how the fish are staying so when you would want to fish these points is basically all year round because bass are going to relate to points and structure all the time. So if you couldn't find them out here on the deep, you want to move to these main lake, this is called a main lake point. If you couldn't find the fish there, then you want to start making your way back into the, into the creek a little further. If it's cooled down, if there's if there's a current and all that stuff that we talked about a few minutes ago, if there's structure and things in that creek channel that the bass are gonna to want to eat or live on, that's where you wanna go. So what do you look for once you've decided to fish in the creek channel? Well, let's idle over there and I'll show you. Before we go any further, you guys may have noticed these little boxes that are dropping down over here above my head or, or wherever they're coming up at. What that is, is just little uh, 
maybe a poll question or a related video that I've suggested or, or something like that. If you guys don't care, go ahead and uh, go here, click on this one, and uh, I'll wait. You can see how it works. No, go ahead. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, that stuff right there, that's going to help me make this channel better for you. If, if you don't care, go back and click on those. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Out here making these videos, it takes a lot of time, and there's nothing better to, to get on here and to see, hey, somebody clicked on that subscribe button. It, it makes you feel really good when you, when you know you're doing something that somebody's enjoying or something somebody's taking away from it. But that's what he's talking about. We were just right here. This is the main river channel. We were just sitting right here. This is that, this is that creek channel that I was telling you about. So we pulled off in here and each area of the lake is completely different than the other. So now I just, I've come in here and I've got this another, another huge body of water. Well, how do I break down what, what all this mess is? Well, the first thing that I notice when I come in is I've got, I've got another point right here. It kind of goes around, goes around. I've got another point there. I got a point over here. I got a point there. Well, on my electronics, I can see how the channel runs and I can already I already know that most likely that channel is going to come in here and, and just do a little snake s because of how the wind is blowing on this channel the winds blowing in our face right now I can see those ripples and I can see where those ripples break well where this is there's no ripples or current on the top of that water I know that that land is higher and this right here is lower so that that kind of shows me the kind of the outline it's, it's not guaranteed but that kind of shows me the general area of how that creek channel is, is, is broken down so once I get back into this creek channel I'm going to fish like I said I know that this is land that's land so there has to be a depth change in here going back into this creek channel I want to start out here on these main points closest to that deep water. If bass were at night time moving in shallow and then in the heat of the day moving back out in deep water like they're going to be doing in the summertime, well, most likely back in the back of these creeks, there's not going to be any fish. All my fish are going to be main river and to these points and maybe maybe back here to this, this point right here. These, this is called a secondary point. It's called a secondary point because this is the first point they come to off the main river, and that's the second point, or this is the second point. Any, any point inside the channel of the creek is gonna be a secondary point. So something else that I noticed when I come, I've come in here, there's, there's banks going all the way, another little, little creek on that goes off into this. So we've got main river and then creek channel, little pockets of water, another creek channel. Well, this right here is gonna be a very large secondary point for me to fish. If you'll notice, there's ripples on the water right here and none right here. Well, I can tell just by looking that this water is gonna be warmer than that water. So I'm, I'm going to stay out of this water because of the temperature. I'm going to fish this point, and I'm going to fish that point, I'm going to fish that point, I'm going to fish this point. And I'm going to fish any kind of structure that I can see, whether it's underneath the water or off the banks. Any kind of lay downs and all, all, the, all the normal stuff that you fish when you, when you come back here into shallow water. Let's take a look at how it would look on your depth finder. If you were to to come in here and break it down without just knowingly having the knowledge of how the land looks, what would it look like on your depth finder? All right guys, what we're looking at here is a Lowrance Elite 5 HDI and it has a, a Navionics card in it that, that shows me these creek channels when I come in. Right here is where we're sitting, so we're up against this bank, and this is right there where we were. This is that brush pile I was telling you about, and right out there is that main creek channel, or the, the main river channel. 
Now on a depth finder, this is how that looks like. Right there is the main river channel, and this is that creek channel that runs through here. Right there is those two pieces of land that's out there in the front that I was telling you about. Let's zoom in here, and I'll show you how I understand about the depth change. Anytime you see on a topographical map or your uh, depth finder, you see these lines that are close together like this, that is a, a steep depth change. Anytime you have these circles, this area is going to be uh, the same, the same uh, depth. It's like a hole. So uh, let's zoom out here. Okay, right now we're sitting in three foot of water, four foot, because we're right here on the bank, and these little lines tell me that this drops off to that creek channel. That creek channel is probably, each line is one foot, so for four, that creek channel is about 13 to 14 foot deep. So I know from where I'm sitting right now to there is a 10 foot change. go back out here to the mouth of the river where we where we just started zoom into this okay again that tells me the creek channel look at this look at this bend here you would want to fish sit right there in that creek channel this is a point this whole little area right here is a point which we knew that from looking at it but if you if you couldn't tell by looking at it this is what it's gonna look like on your on your depth finder this there's not a bend right here it's still a point but this point and this curve in this creek channel makes this right here makes this a hole so it goes from uh, the bank to again 12 to 14 foot so that's how you want to that's how you want to work your depth finder and your and your uh, creek channels together come back in here off the main river channel right here this shows me the creek channel it, it s curves just like I was talking about this land right here that shows me the point that shows me how shallow it gets how it goes right here to this little hole I know right there's gonna be my deepest spot off of that point see how that land comes around this is the point here's a point this is a little slough that goes back in here as a matter of fact it's it's right there this is this is this this is that circle area in there and that's that little area that goes back into that we can tell right here what depth that is and if there's any kind of gradual change let's zoom out and take a take a big look at the overhead on this okay you can see anytime you have a, a creek channel that comes back and look at how it splits off right here in the very back of that creek channel what do you have it splits it splits into two creek channels very good spot right here and what we're looking at right here is right there where they're fishing it's right there where they're fishing this is the point of that land that comes off it forks off there forks off here now you can say well I knew that because we were looking at it at the front up there well just because it looks like this doesn't mean it's a creek channel. It could come back here and just be two foot deep all the way around. It having that line of that creek channel tells me there's depth change back here. So what you want to do on the depth change is look right here. Look at how it creates these holes. There's a spot. There's a spot right here. This little area right here, it creates depth change. This whole area right here, all this right here is going to be a great area because it was 
just one two little spots two little points now that I have these creek channels in here it's made one two three four five six points I've doubled my high percentage fishing areas because of these creek channels this is what you want to look for how these creek channels bend around these land masses just because there's land there doesn't mean there's a creek channel going back into it well guys that breaks down the video on why certain areas are better than others and how you find fish based on the weather and the creek channel i hope you guys enjoyed the video do me a favor go ahead and hit that subscribe button so i know i've gave you guys a lot of information today so let's just go back and do a real quick recap on, on the on the whole thing when you first start fishing you need to understand that bass live in deep water and they spend their whole time transitioning from deep water to shallow water based on the water temperature and the water clarity and where their food is the number one thing that you want to make sure that you understand is where is current and where are the food summertime your bass are going to be out in the coolest water you can find where do you find the coolest water? Where the current is. Where's your current? The current is out in the main river channel. 